Hey, Asaf. Hello to all our friends out there. Welcome to the Great Transition, where yes. we look at the world. Hey, how Welcome are you? Welcome to the spaceship, everybody. Hello. Hello, world. We are looking at the world through the lens of the wisdom of Kabbalah. We are looking every day. We wake up, especially yesterday. We feel like crap. And uh, we look at the news, and things seem to be deteriorating all around, although... We don't have to wear our masks so much anymore, but mm. these feelings of emptiness keep growing inside. We keep looking around the world and we keep seeing more and more problems. And at the same time, we discovered this ancient wisdom, which lifts the veil on what's going on in life, gives us a blueprint for what. how did we get here, even from before the Big Bang. It starts to describe, it even describes the blueprint of creation from before the Big Bang, through creation, all the way to here. And where is this all? Beyond time and space, what's really going on? There is, uh, and it's incredible to be on that journey because everything, while we live in this world and we're perceiving everything for sure with our senses, with our eyes, and we're seeing how things are, at the same time, we start developing another perception, uh, which is very paradoxical which seems yes. very opposite to what's going on with the eyes. And thus we have this very special method, uh, the wisdom of Kabbalah. Not and a religion, not uh, a belief system, not a tradition, uh, a wisdom that can actually be called a science, uh, a method for expanding human perception, human awareness. Yeah, I like, I like opening up with that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah okay so well let's let's look at it um very very practically because that's another part of this where no one's required to believe anything or have any hocus pocus about anything we just want to test everything and, and try and understand where our good future lies how is it possible that this planet filled with egoists of people who can't get along even within the same family how is it possible that this world can come to peace? How is it possible with enough money and billions and trillions and enough food, half of the food goes to waste and enough land with all, and all the technology and everything we have yep. that we still suffer constantly and endlessly? Is it possible we can come to a good life? So let's see what nature's doing. Let's see what we're doing and let's see how we can, uh, we can shed some light on on the situation so yesterday like a normal person like the uh, normal maybe, person that i maybe am. seth let's just yeah. say um also hello to everyone who's watching from anywhere you are in the world and uh i see some are already connecting from toronto canada and ohio and minnesota and spain and italy i think um nice yeah and um yeah uh there we go so uh yeah Anyone who's just uh, tuning in right now, tell us where you're watching from. Uh, if you can, that'll be great. Hey, Laura. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Simone. Here before the rest. Ruby, Deborah. There we go. See, now they're coming in. Okay. Why are you seeing all this? I'm looking at the Kabbalah Info uh, chat here, and I'm also looking at the TGT chat. Uh, and I'm also... Okay. Oh, somebody's here from Rothschild. I'm yeah, that's, a, <laughs> that's an interesting it's Probably place. a reference to some kind uh, of... Theodora like from Bulgaria even... is here. Okay, go ahead. All right, okay, okay. okay. <sighs> so, um, so let's start on the ground, and then we'll slowly rise up to the higher levels. So like the normal person that I am... I sure. went to normal to normal work <laughs> uh, to feed my normal family with normal food. And I saw something interesting there yesterday. There was a baby deer who was left there by his uh, by his mom, presumably. Um, mm. Super cute. Chris, picture? I sent you a picture. You this got earlier. a picture you for can, us? You can, yeah. Yeah. Go. Chris, if you can put it up. OK, this. Oh, oh, oh. So this is right outside my office. Um, little baby deer his mom is or her mom or their mom whatever the baby deer's pronouns are left it there <laughs> and okay. and um the the emotional outpouring that happened at the office yesterday 
Somebody called a goat farm and got goat milk and got a bottle to feed it goat milk from a bottle and another person this and they called the animal control to move it from one place into the shade and this and this over a wow. baby deer that was left by his mom by our office. I started to think that maybe we should start raising money for the baby deer and maybe we should go discovering all of the baby deer that are left by their moms. And, <laughs> and why stop with baby deer? Because there's also probably a lot of um, a GoFundMe account. Yeah, there's probably a lot of baby birds that are also abandoned, um, not to mention uh, baby zebras and baby giraffes sure. and any other yeah. animals, cute, adorable little animals that, that are abandoned. Uh, probably because they're weak or aren't going to survive. And instead of these animal parents having some compassion on their weakest children mm -hmm. and maybe sick children, they leave them to die. Um, so what do we as humans do? We come in and try and fix it. I mean, that's what happened yesterday. I was right. amazed at the outpouring and the care and how everybody was so really moved by an accident that happened outside of our office. Um, I wonder what would happen if, if, if we saw more animals abandoned, how it might change our mood on a regular mm. basis, how much everybody seemed so caring. Um, but it's not just that nature leaves animals to die. Uh, there's a there's a million children, humans that are dying of starvation mm. this year. One, it's also mil about one a million billion, mm. a million children, about a hundred million people that are, d are dying of starvation every year. Right. I know you guys had your whole so, little Middle Eastern, uh, your uh, scheduled Middle Eastern conflict where yeah. a couple hundred people, but you got a million kids dying every year from starvation. Wow. There's plenty of food. But that's what nature, how she planned it. It's also a billion people that are malnourished every year that are dealing with with a, with almost no food, mm. okay? And about a hundred million that are living in like almost starvation situation. So nature also made smallpox and polio and malaria. Um, All that really jazz. All what? That ja All that jazz all that yeah. great stuff and and us as humans on our part we're always trying to fix all of the problems mm. that nature keeps making Na nature keeps starving little innocent children and we keep trying to feed them or maybe we're not doing a great job at it but we're trying with all of our egos mm -hmm. and all of our stupidity and all of our selfishness there's still you know, there's still efforts to feed them so nature's evil we're good that's, well, you that's, said that. I'm just pointing out her behavior. <laughs> you can label it. Um, but yeah, she does a pretty thorough job at killing and at causing diseases and even causing parents to abandon their children and or animals to abandon their children, right? Even without human intervention there. And we, for our part as humans, um, we try and fix it kind of hmm. well I, uh, I i have to i have to uh um to say to give another perspective nature also creates life and sustains life and you know um so you're giving her a free pass what do um, you mean i killed some i starved children i also gave them life yeah no, I it better I'm, you I'm, didn't give them life if you're just going to let them be born and then die. Well, that's that's a f great philosophical question for uh, you know to for for debating, but but you can't ignore that nature shows you both sides. We're looking at both sides. We're looking at um, magnificent system, uh, a program of life that nourishes and nurtures and and creates this. You know, just the, the stuff that's happening in a mother's womb to create a baby, that's, that's incredible. That's beyond incredible. We, have, we still have, with all our great science and medicine, we still don't know exactly how this thing happens, this miracle of life. And then on the other hand, we see situations where Mother Nature leaves the deer to die. Uh, and uh, there's even... There's even cases, I, I saw this 
nature documentary a while ago, a long time ago, actually, with Ali. And it was very hard for her to watch, especially, <laughs> I think it was just like shortly after we had our second child or something like that. Anyway, there's this bird, can't remember the name or the kind of it, not a bird expert, but there's a kind of a bird that she gives birth to two little birdies and one eats the other that's and 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 they show it and it's it's it really is how they build it with the exposition and the story the narrative of a, around this bird and then the nature of film you it it's gut-wrenching um so nature does this it's, it's, and it it's does gut that wrenching it's all, is all i'm saying with it's gut-wrenching with the dramatic music in the background mm -hmm. and the exposition and the build-up right but if you look at the last hundred thousand years of birds eating each other or chimpanzees are cutie cutie chimpanzees everybody do a youtube search for chimpanzees eating they eat other monkeys alive a chimp goes or wow. one of these kind of monkeys they, they go they grab one of the other little monkeys and they just start eating its face oh, and ripping boy. its arm off and eating it these are the cute chimps so every <laughs> single day that a monkey is eating he's he's eating uh he's cannibalizing another little monkey so if you were to just take one and make a <laughs> whole story around it right like if you made a story with music right. and lighting and yeah. camera angles you could really make it dramatic mm -hmm. but then if you zoom out and see that this is how monkeys are sustaining themselves and it's happening every single day and has for hundreds of thousands of years mm -hmm. you know maybe it's yeah. our story that's the problem or the story we put on top of it um, yeah but the what we see is nature does a good job of uh yeah but 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 again both both sides it does a it does a, a miraculous job of giving life and it does a miraculous life work of uh of killing life it does both things um the hindus have a uh have this kind of three god system uh yeah. i used to do yoga a lot it was called uh shiva vishnu brahma or brahma brahma vishnu shiva or something like that it's like one god is the creating god one god is the sustaining god mm. and one god is the is the destroying god shiva by the way it's uh you know when when a person dies in the jewish religion there's the shiva also Shiva, ah, Shiva. I, don't ah. connect, I don't know if there's any connection. I, I don't, I don't, it's, it's a different word. In English, it's, it's the word. same spelling. Okay, fine. Uh, I think the Indian anyway. is Shiva and the Hebrew is Shiva. Okay, which, fine. which means seven, so, which means seven, basically. Because so, um, it's seven but there days, are these different seven, aspects seven of, the, of, yeah. the, of the God there that one portion of the God is like this creating force, mm -hmm. one portion is the killing force. And, right. Uh, it's considered. Right it's considered like that in fact they have uh they have a lot of gods over there um kind of for each yeah quite a few each, each aspect including the new one which one is that the the corona god i heard so i heard there's a new there's a new god in town in india tell me about it i i heard that um first of all india is having it really bad right now with COVID, I think it's the worst in the world right now. Uh, people are dying in the tens of thousands a day. Oh my God! And they are um, uh, again nature killing people and and other creatures. Uh, they are to the point that that it's 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 on it's it's such a it's such a volume. They're they're they're. Um, burning bodies like left and right uh before they even get to like ventilators or oxygen or whatever it's it's bad it's really really bad right now in india and there you go and indians um uh are going to um to worship the corona goddess uh, of some sort let's read this headline she's an angry goddess india's coronavirus deities disease cure and shrines offer hope to desperate devotees a long entrenched tradition of turning to faith in calamitous times has seen indians flock to shrines 
and temples as the pandemic rages on. The country's chronically underfunded health system is part of the reason, though such practices have a long history and not everyone believes. Yeah, so that's, so, you know, mm. that's, um, that's something that's happening. That's a now. long tradition, actually, of, uh, of humans to turn to the sky when you need rain or, you know, when you need to be fertile, you do some kind of thing. And if, yeah, there's something very natural about it, actually. Uh, if you remove all of the kind of human trappings around it, you know, you're, you're dependent on the forces of nature and you kind of realize it and without nature. Now, on the other hand, um, you know, here in, here in the States, we manhandled that thing, man. We took that, we took that <laughs> virus, we tied her up, we threw her down, beat her up, you know, <laughs> got our vaccines, get those masks off. We're back in business over here. We, you know, we didn't turn to oh, any yeah. God oh, yeah, over here. here. We used our money and our powers, our right. forces, right. and we, we eliminated it. But I understand in India, they turn to, it's a different approach. They have these different kind of approaches, I think. One is that we're going to, you know, forget about nature. We're going to we're going to deal with this. And the other one is right. this, you know, kind of completely just throwing up our hands and, and turning to nature. Um, regardless, nature's doing a, a, she's doing a job on, on humanity, huh? Yeah, for sure. There is, there, there's, there's no way around. Here's what's beautiful about nature's work please tell me there, something there's, beautiful <laughs> beautiful depending on how you look at it but uh um, i'm gonna say it's beautiful so we'll <laughs> to prime you to look at it in a beautiful way okay Na nature causes us to um it doesn't it doesn't let us escape from trying to figure out what's going on this contradiction between good and evil, good and bad, positive things we see in reality, negative things we see in, in reality. This constant contradiction forces us to evolve consciously. It, this is what evolves human consciousness, this living between opposites, this existence in between the plus and minus, this contract, constant contradictory reality that we feel man has tried for you know from the dawn of time from or at least from the moment we became more self-aware and conscious of where we are we are trying to figure out what is the story what are all where where do all religions come from you see corona goddess just think about that you know, think humanity a couple thousand years ago. Think about how all of this has evolved. Man started, you know, man felt it's his dependency on the forces of nature. We're seeing that on the one hand, rain comes and it, it, it brings crops. And on the other hand, there's horrible storms that, that we, we, we have to hide, hide, you know, so they don't kill us, right? So is nature good or bad? And as long as, as nature was um, clearly superior to us, we were more uh, inclined to solve this problem, this riddle, this contradictory existence that we live in. We were more inclined to solve it in religious fashions, by ways of believing, because we always felt like nature is superior to us. But when we started becoming more modern, more uh, scientifically inclined, more feeling like we are less and less dependent on nature. We don't have to live in a cave. We can live in our own building with our air conditioning and get our food from the supermarket. We don't depend on the rain so much. We have artificial irrigation, whatever it is, you know, we became more and more seemingly independent of the forces of nature. And that made us change our story. And so um that's what's beautiful <laughs> that's where i started right is that nature doesn't let us escape figuring this out this is how i would 
see it from a Kabbalistic perspective. Nature will continue even as modern and scientifically evolved and, and capable of harnessing the forces of nature to our own good as we think we are. Nature is still stronger and nature is gradually developing our consciousness to come to terms, to come to grips, to solve that riddle of why do we feel that we're in a contradictory existence. Is nature good or bad? Is it supposed to, does it, is it good to us or bad to us? And are we supposed to be something towards it as well? Are we supposed to relate to it in a certain way? If you, are we supposed if to you, save uh, the deer? If, if you are, broke your leg and lost your job, you'd think nature was bad. But then if you went around the corner and someone gave you $10 million, you'd think nature was good. And then right. if you fell into a hole and lost the $10 million, you'd <laughs> think nature was bad. bad. But then yeah. if you crawled out of the hole and somebody offered you another $10 million, you'd think nature was good. So exactly. I don't think nature's changing in that situation. <laughs> I think it's all about our perspective. Right. But you know, it depends on how nice mm, everyone is to me and how much stuff they give me. And then I'll tell you how good nature is or not. Right. Um, okay. So to continue on that, human perception being the primary, the, 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 the foundation rather than what nature is doing. So if nature is constant, then you have to also accept that all the good stuff that you see and all the bad stuff that you see are coming from the same intention from well, maybe intention is a more difficult word now but but it's there's, there's coming from here. the same oh, there's, something, there's something weird about that besides okay. the the okay. yellow filter on my lighting which is also weird but there's something weird about what you just said and that is we it actually is kind of warm and nice i, I look it too, is warm too yeah. cold now okay my mind looks just, our, our tones aren't yeah similar. not in sync um, yeah we have this kind of innate thing that we kind of feel that nature's supposed to be good or that people are supposed like we're always surprised when people do something wrong mm, okay. you know or like how could he do that you're like um because he has inner urges that's how <laughs> exactly how and that's how his ancestors all were for the last million years that's why he did that it's not a shouldn't be a surprise to you you know we always are surprised that people behave the way they do we're always surprised when things aren't good but the evidence kind of points to the opposite it should be we should be shocked when something good happens we should we should be kind of used to the fact that our lives are filled with very difficult you know, nature makes it really hard for us although there's plenty of money there's plenty of food there's plenty of land there's plenty of clean water there can be plenty of i mean maybe hopefully there's plenty of clean water i don't know it depends on how fast we keep polluting it but mm -hmm. there nature provides plenty of everything but just kind of left to run on autopilot with us we end up having a, you know we keep like crashing the sh crashing the car and, yeah and having a bad experience and we would have to honestly say nature is not so kind to us but you see this is you're you're uh indirectly talking about the same question here you're actually asking what is the role of the human in the natural system that's the one thing that we need to be trying to figure out. That's what I'm saying. Nature is pushing us to figure out. Because, 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 are we supposed to kill to to help the deer? That that your your uh, let them die, or or are we supposed to let them die? You know, there's no. Don't let them. He's so cute, no, though. No, no, I no, asked no, my no. kids if I should bring I'm, it home. Okay, I'm not asking this from a philosophical, moral philosophy standpoint. Uh, I I had learn enough of my share of philosophy for two years many years ago um and it just becomes this cyclical kind of discussion about trying to figure out morality among philosophers not not the branch i liked anyway i'm not talking about the philosophical question is it a moral or immoral thing to do i'm asking what will be the the most uh appropriate 
fulfillment of the human function in the natural system. Is there uh, um, a more or less correct attitude and behavior on our part when we see that uh, deer, that nature left to, left to to die, basically, right? Okay, so there, so there's there's two there's two approaches here. There's the there's the approach in the West, kind of the U, the U.S., which is like we're gonna we're uh, actually it's not just the West; it's also the East. It's also actually I don't know if you could say West and East, because look at China also very right. similar to like the U.S. It's like we are going to you know lock this thing down. We're gonna we're gonna control this. We're gonna control everything about how you live, what you say, where you go. We control it. Then on the other side of the spectrum is like India, for example, or just these kind of faith-based outlooks on life, which mm -hmm. is, um, and probably even interesting because you have India and then you also have like very um, religious people over here in America too, who just, you know, believe that Jesus, if you just pray to Jesus, um, you know, he's going to fix everything. Right. And in India, yeah. they're praying to a God that he's going to fix everything. So that's West and East. And then on the other hand, you also have this other thing of West and East. You have like the United States saying, we're going to, you know, we're going to beat this virus. We're going to fight this virus. We're going right. to spend our way out of this crisis. We're going to, you know, beat changes in the climate. Yeah. It's like, you know, do, and, do we, do we, uh, do we fight our way? against the crises that nature puts before us or do we pray our way out of nature's crises that's kind of like you know in, in broad right, so there's strokes, these two views and you, you can't think about the say corona that one's God, eastern or yeah. one's western you can't you, you can two... no longer say that it's already so intertwined you know like uh, to, i'll give it to give another example right if you think about medicine uh, and like so you could say in the past Right. If you compare like Eastern medicine and Western medicine, like which is newer. Right. So the approach in Western medicine is basically, oh, you have a tumor. We need to get in, get it out, fix it. Get it. <laughs> right. And the right. approach in in I'm just, you know, uh, uh, expressively exaggerating a little bit. But just to, but the approach, right. The approach is I'm the hero. Look at also at Hollywood movies, Western, you know, kind of culture and all that. Mm -hmm. I'm the hero that will say every every day moviegoers, you know, uh, go to to just to celebrate these these uh, celebrities who act out that they are superheroes that are saving the world. <laughs> it's like it's it's so deeply rooted in the culture. This idea in Western culture that we are the fixers, we are the, the, the saviors, right? So when you see the deer, you have to save the deer. Never mind that, that while you're doing that, you know, uh, your, your, your country is, uh, okay, let's hold on. So, so let's, wait, let's wait. talk about a Western country that, that wants to fix things. Okay. So you, you weren't I, finished. I I was trying to to, to compare it okay, medicine tell me, tell me. as an example, but but I lost my track completely. So, oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. So uh, no, I I, I I forgot where I started from. The um, it's Western medicine. Let's get in, get the problem out. We are the heroes, basically. That's the the approach. Eastern medicine, uh, again, and I'm very over generalizing here, but in you know in in general, the thought the thinking is. Let's help the body. The body knows what to do. The body is a holistic system that can revive itself and recover itself, rejuvenate what needs to be done and fix and balance itself. We just need to help it, nudge it, support it, encourage it, and it will do its thing. And so these, this, these medical applications, you know, they also come from a different uh, a view on this question. Are we supposed to meddle with nature and, and fix what nature does? Or are we supposed to take a more kind of a, a different kind of role, more of a participatory role where we, where we uh, just become aware of what nature needs to do, where we let nature do what it needs to do. You know, there, there was this, okay, dude, a lot of tangents here are coming to my head. So tell me where you want to go. There. <laughs> Tell me where you want to go. 
um, you're saying let nature do what they what it wants to do. So let me just add another another spinning plate and, and try and figure out here. We want to look through what's going on. Okay, we're putting a lot of things on the table. Mm -hmm. We want to look through it with these Kabbalistic lenses, with these lenses. We want to rise above what's happening day to day, but use these things as, as right. um, you know, when I see the world through my own perspective, I base everything on how I feel. And if I'm really good, then maybe I know, for example, well, I don't feel good when I'm exercising, but I have my goal, you know, so I can mm. postpone my feeling good until later. So I'm suffering now in the gym because I'm going to feel good later. But all of my actions in life are based on me feeling good. I'm speaking for each person, right? There, there's no other way we can decide to do something if we don't see some benefit in it. Otherwise, we can't move. Mm -hmm. There's another way to perceive life that we're talking about here, which has to do something we didn't get into spirituality too much yet, but it has to do with some other perspective. But right. we need to look at where we are here first, understand what's yeah. going on. So with that being said, let me just add another piece to the, pu the puzzle here, okay? Last year, there was a great crop in Australia. A lot of things grew, great bounty. Okay. So you know what happens after a great bumper crop in Australia in 2020? What? Tell me a cannibalistic mice plague in 2021. So there is now um, a plague of cannibal mice that is taking over parts of Australia um, in schools, in homes, in hospitals, in Wales, in Queensland. Thank you, Chris. Cannibal mice threaten Sydney homes. Yeah. So, ah, sorry. So the, the, the point is that um, we talked about this one, you know, one group is praying mm -hmm. to nature to fix like in India, right? They, they, now they have their Corona God and the other group like the, like uh, in the West, China or the U S like we're going to defeat it. Right. How far, how many things can you defeat and how fast can you do what i'm trying to do is push this conversation to a breaking point because how many things like we think we got the virus under control let's let's see how that's going how that goes we'll see if nature has anything else in store around the virus but now you get you know the ma the, the starvation and the mouse plague in australia and the oh god chris what was the one you talked about the um even if you say it's man-made you know where are men getting these desires from where is men getting their 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 impetus to move from chris what was the um sri lanka so, some horrible uh, the acid spill yeah the whole yeah. bottom floor of the ocean will be dead basically they're saying yeah some mm. container ship filled with chemicals and plastics and stuff is on mm. fire in sri lanka and is just poisoning the the, the sea there so right how many front, like your little country over there, like how many fronts can you fight a war on until you're like, we need a different perspective on what's going on here because between mm -hmm. the acid spill and the cannibal mice and the virus and the impending financial disaster and the starvation and the depression and everything right. else, like how many more wars can we fight against nature? Yeah. So we need to understand uh, what is, who are we fighting with? This is the issue. Kabbalistically, we, this is what's, what's happening. You could say we're in a war, but we're not in a war against nature. That's a misconception. That's a misunderstanding. We need to, to look at a different way uh, into the contradiction that we see in nature. Because from, from, the, from the, the perspective of Kabbalah, it's not like we need to um, 
you know pray to pray to some higher power that everything will be okay and on the other hand it's not like we shouldn't do something to better our situation sure if there if there's a virus and it doesn't matter where it comes from right now and just you know technically if there is a, a disease that we can somehow protect ourselves from we should do it we should do it but at this at the same time and this is what's uh what is not present in any of these uh belief belief systems religions or uh just you know a pure purely scientific view on on reality and nature we need to do two things at the same time we need to try to balance our physical existence and that means uh, protect ourselves from natural disasters uh, try to be you know keep our hygiene so we don't get infected with all kinds of things sure but at the same time we need to find the reason for all of those evolutionary problems that nature is sending us see the 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 problem with the with the purely uh let's call it secular western scientific view the problem with it is the good thing about it is that may man you know man decided that he need that he needs to be independent and that he can do things we can do things if we put our minds to it and we can better our situation and we can kind of we need that attitude to take control of our evolution we that needs to happen so we don't um, remain as just a monkey anymore. exactly so we don't we're not just ants or you know some some sort of beings that are just, uh, just run by instinct completely run completely by instinct or by you know, some blind kind of uh, uh, faith or blind belief uh, where we don't actually exercise our capacities our in uh, for independence and consciousness. So that is a step in the right direction. But what it's lacking, the problem with, with that approach is that we become, uh, we, we might become less sensitive to the to where nature is taking us uh what, I, what i'm saying right now by the way is not uh you know something that i'm, I'm coming up with this is the, the really the article the kabbalistic article to go to for this whole issue of how to look at the contradictions that we see in nature is the peace article from bala sulam where he explains this uh uh in a bit more of a archaic language that we need to get used to but he explains this uh, in detail beautifully well, let, let's speak so, about it for a second so we're not talking about the article peace in the world we're talking about the article specifically the called the peace right so and the article has a, he has a certain style of writing and it's yeah. not super simple so why don't we try and and open it up a little bit so if anyone wants to go look at it later they already are primed for it you want to just yeah talk about the, the section a little bit I would actually recommend if people are new to these writings, I would recommend them to get your book instead, as as a first. Oh, there we go. And Good idea. At least at least together with the articles to accompany the the articles because they do need you do need to get used to that style of writing and, and interpreting the texts correctly. But um, anyway, maybe we can throw some links into the the comments section afterwards. The Gen generally explain what these different perspectives he brings up in the article and then where I'll, this I'll continue new... from. So this, so the first, so the science, the, the secular scientific Western, whatever you want to call it, kind of uh, approach basically says, look, there's nature. It has its laws. It has its evolutionary program, but it is, we are considering because we don't see more than that we can can consider everything as completely random there's no purpose that nature is senseless mindless purposeless planless kind of thing and we exist in it the problem with that the problem with that with that approach is that um first of all it goes against man's gut level need 
for purpose. Even if, you know, uh, uh, any person, you know, that takes take the person who is the most atheist in the world, at the end of the day, if you're a human being, you need to somehow find some purpose in life. You need to, we are creatures that are motivated by looking for meaning and purpose. That's That's also why our brain is wired for narratives and we have to like find the 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 purpose of every story in short we're 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 going against our own gut level needs with thinking that nature is just this completely blank planless purposeless senseless mindless uh um uh, system of laws and that's it the pro the other side of the equation is to say oh there is uh, there's God behind everything that's happening. And so um, if there's a good thing that's happening to us and a bad thing that's happening to us, then there must be some good God and some bad God, right? There has to be some forces, good and evil, that are fighting and they control the situation. So then you let go, you, you, you remove your participation from the story. And that's problem number one. You can go further with it and assign a different God to different things. So you have God, for example, and then you have Satan who's causing the God is making all the good stuff and Satan's making the bad stuff. That's, that's you know, one ver- very, level. and then you have another level that, you know, that, Govinda is, is taking care of this part of my life and, and the, uh, Saraswati is taking care of this part of my life, and for each different right. different aspect of my life, I can have a different god. Yeah, like they did in the you know Greek mythology is the classic example where they said, okay, okay, let's just you know there's so many, too many examples, too many things that are happening. You know, there's war and there's a fire and there's a love and there's all kinds of things. So there has to be a god responsible for each of these. The problem with that is that you're going into now a completely scattered perception where everything is disconnected, where it's not one system where everything is interdependent and interconnected. You can have your own deal with this God. I'll have my deal with that God. All those, that's basically what the Greek mythologies are are all about, right? Like what are the different kind of transactions between the the gods, the gods and the humans? Think about how these things, look, the problem... Here's the thing. We're talking about these things like ancient thinking patterns. It's not ancient. This is how you and I and everyone in the world, let's say those who are not studying the wisdom of Kabbalah, okay, are looking at reality right now, even though we don't we don't realize it. Every day you wake up, you go to work, you have some troubles with your boss, with your wife, with your kids, with the bank, with all kinds of things. Your question, your inner question is, what is actually happening to me? And then immediately, because we need a story, human beings need to figure out what is the story we're living in, we, 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 without even noticing it, we solve it by one of these, in one of these ways. We either say, he's the criminal in my life, this one is the savior in my life, this one is the cause for all the problems. Yeah. Yeah. And, and these, these archetypes of, of, um, of gods and so on they they're so deeply rooted in how we think again we talked about how people go to movies to see heroes and it's why does it work on us why does it work so well because it is we are constantly looking for how to solve this these contradictions that we see in nature in reality and um so 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 hold on a second yeah so we have so hard stop for a second so we have this one perspective where we're just kind of left alone on this planet here there's a bunch of laws of nature gravity whatever and there's no purpose to it know, there's no there's no there, purpose there, there's, there's just no, we just there's we just no happen plan to be here we're on exactly. a certain rock it's all random space and this is important feel free one one what? second this is this is this is an important point because it is it it is it becomes such a dogmatic way of thinking that today if you're a scientist and you would dare to suggest that nature has some overall plan in some schools of thought you would be outcast you you would be you would be you know banned that type of thinking 
would be immediately labeled as, re as, as religious or non-scientific. Why? Because we can't uh, empirically measure it with our uh, current senses and our current tools. And that's, that's why, in this respect, science could be limiting. It doesn't go into so the science, why. Science says we have a box, and inside this box, there's a lot of elements, and there's a bunch of rules, yeah. laws that that dictate how those elements all relate to each other, and that's that. And whether and or not we discovered it all yet, it doesn't matter. It's all in that box. Let's research how that box works, how where things go from here to there. Science does this best. It it explains the how of reality, but why? What is the purpose? Okay, hold on, of reality? Let's just leave. What's let's that's, just leave. Let, yeah. Let, let's just mm -hmm. okay. That's one. Okay. Let's just be clear about this. So right, but describes one says, that one. One says number one says no purpose. That's an important point. Yeah, a box says, full of stuff, and it's just there's no purpose interacting to it. in there, and there's no purpose okay. to it. That's important to, to. Okay. Yeah. Then he describes another group, which is the group that we talked about with India, for example, where or in Greek mythology. Okay, I need rain such and such a god i need to make a deal with him about that we need sun another god we need to deal with that i need money well I got before that one. you have health. just the two the, the good and evil good and bad god ah, and so Satan god does everything good and the devil does everything bad yeah very yeah something very very obvious in christianity for example but okay let's okay the mm -hmm. third one is multiple gods one for each power yeah that's yeah. kind of like what we see in India now about the Absolutely. praying to this corona, corona goddess. Right. Okay. But again, I, I so. don't want to, it's, it's Seth, it's important to, to say that we, I, I, I don't want to say, oh, it's those people thinking like that. We always think like that as well. Even all if you of don't us go, think like that all the time. All the time. We go from thinking, oh, something bad happened to me in life. Well, you know, it just happened. Things happen. Right? Oh, I, I got a bad I got a bad feeling in my stomach, you know, I got I got some some medical problem. It happened. That's one way of looking at it. Or you can say, well, now the bad force of my life has taken over. The good you know, that this even if you don't call it God and Satan or God or you can say, you know, it's because that doctor, he is, you know, he treated me badly, or he you know what I mean? So we always ascribe we, we subscribe to one of these of these methods in order to explain to ourselves where we are and what's happening to us. Okay, so Bala Sulam lays these out, and as you just said, not only is it Greek mythology or happening in some village in India, but actually if we look at ourselves, we're always doing this, all, all of these different things. Yeah. Now comes the wisdom of Kabbalah. Right. Now, before you get to the wisdom of Kabbalah, I just want to say that Wendy Walbrink is here, and she's asking some really good questions. Wendy, we see them, and we see everyone's questions. David, we see your questions, and Francine, and slanted, slightly slanted sleuth. Wendy asks, why not save the deer? If it only needs help for a few months, we do the same for children. Um, well, no, that's what we said at the beginning, but why stop at that deer? Only because my eyes saw that deer? Should I, if I know that there's another couple hundred deer in the woods, in the forest, should I not stop at the deer that was just left outside of my office? Am I only responsible for what my eyes see? If I'm a hiker and I happen to see two more, should I also save them? And what about birds? Should I be walking around or should I only be responsible just for what happens right in front of my eyes? Or am I required to also have my ear out, anything that my kids have heard about in the neighborhood or, or anywhere else? So we have to understand, you know, who am I responsible, whose life am I responsible for? Everyone, no one, just what my eyes see? It's a question. What about the baby humans that are that are dying just, you know, farther from, the from why do I why do I take time to go sit in a to go to a every once in a while I go to a um cryotherapy you know about it it's like freezing cold it's like minus 200 degrees it's supposed oh, to be you really do that? good for the yeah i yeah. take my, both I, my boys play soccer i and did really in, sore. in in russia when we we went to well, there was a couple of convention there right uh in moscow was amazing yeah. it was an amazing experience with all of our our uh, russian friends anyway they took me to some something 
<laughs> it's the Russian version of it. You jump in a freezing cold. <laughs> you spring. go into free. Uh, it's no. You go into the sauna first, so hot, and then cold. And oh, then, the Russian and friends then took hot me again. in Chicago. Grisha took me to the and bunny, and they beat again. you with these willow branches too, yeah, to bring the blood up. Yeah, that's classic. The... But the hot, cold, hot, right. cold thing, it's specifically, it's smart. It's in order to, they say it's, uh, it opens up uh, like your very, very uh, tiny, thin blood vessels that otherwise there's no other way to kind of refresh them, exercise them, you know, get them to uh, recirculate better. Your capillaries. Better. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, So here's cool. my question. Why should I care about my capillaries and about the <laughs> great relaxation I feel eating pierogies and herring and drinking vodka afterwards uh -huh. when there are a million starving children and yeah. starving and dying deer and dying baby birds? Why do I stop and put on comedy? at least once a day to laugh about something why do i take time for these things why do i do why do i go on a vacation when there's starving children you know where should we be dedicating our morning noon and night mm -hmm. and every ounce of energy to eradicating the suffering and will it help and before we answer that question let's get back to the article for a second <laughs> follow salam's article so he, he laid out a few things here. He laid out the one approach, which is there's no purpose here. All this stuff is in a box with all these laws operating on it and everything is just happening here. Then we got this other approach where there's a good God who does everything good and there's a bad God responsible for everything bad. And then we got the multiple gods approach, which we all know, right? That God, that damn police officer who pulled me over, the damn IRS who did this. My, you know, I can't believe he lied to me about this. Hey, well, constantly, as if each mm -hmm. one of these forces operating on me somehow has some dominion over me that can, can, can rule my life, right? If only, you know, I picked one lottery, if only the lottery God just made a different ball come up my whole destiny would have been different. You know, if only, you know, the soccer coach would have picked me in fifth grade, then the girl would have liked me, which would have given me confidence to get the good grade, which would have this, and you know, so each, all of these different influences on us. And then Bala Sulaim lays it all out, all of these things that operate on us, and then he comes and tells us about the wisdom of Kabbalah, which is why everybody came here today, Asaf, to understand what right. is this wisdom telling so us? So it's very simple. How is it going to help us? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to say it's very simple. I'm also looking at the time we have left, which is not a lot. And that's why I'm making it short. Once again, you have five minutes to explain the purpose of creation. <laughs> the, the, you should um, be getting good at it by now. <laughs> the, uh, uh, so, so Kabbalah's approach to solving this, this contradiction is actually very simple. Kabbalah, first of all, uh, um, um, it's very close to the scientific view, but with a twist. Bala Sulam says, I think later on in that article, much later in that article, it's a long article where he where he also explains the difference between, uh, uh, you know, uh, any society that's trying to be socialist or communist and what Kabbalah explains about human connection and how that can build a society in balance with nature. Anyway, so he explains there, the only difference between me and, uh, he says, as a Kabbalist and those who look at uh, nature as a system of laws, nature is a system of laws. You can call God the creator. You can call it nature. It's the same thing from a Kabbalistic perspective. But the difference is, while the scientists, let's say, look at this, this system of laws as just operating uh, by necessity, one thing necessitates the other, uh, the Kabbalist sees the guiding purpose behind the laws. That's the whole difference. But that little unseen difference is, uh, is, is, is huge. It's a, it's, a, it's a little shift, but it's, it changes everything. Because now it means that everything that's happening to us Yes, we are supposed to respond. If someone is going to fight you, then you need to protect yourself. If there is a phenomenon in nature itself that is hurting you, you need to find a way to protect yourself. But you also need 
to figure out why this thing has happened to you and where is it taking you. There is um, uh, a purpose for each and every little thing that happens from the very beginning of the, 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 the explosion that scientists refer to as the Big Bang to the um uh Barasalam gives a a crazy example like it's it's a um, it's humoristic uh even he says even the uh remember that remember that we talked about this uh, a lot that example he says even when the when the the donkey pisses on an ant right <laughs> that too is a purposeful part of nature's plan everything that we see all of the horrific stuff that are uh, uh that that are very hard to justify or the good the bad the ugly it all comes from nature all of those lo those laws they're interconnected gravity and elect just like gravity and electromagnetism and all those uh laws are are connected uh, according to physics everything that's happening to us in human society including our personal individual thoughts and desires all of it is in the same system nothing gets out of this system and that system has a goal now it has a why it has a purpose what is the purpose to bring creation all of those levels of nature still vegetative animate and human all the levels of creation to bring them into equivalence balance adhesion it's called in the wisdom of kabbalah a, a, a state of conscious connection with that guiding intention that created all those levels that's what the scientists are not researching and even prevent themselves from from looking at and kabbalah looks at that in an empirical way not in some uh um you know by you're not supposed to believe that you're supposed to discover that how by working on a similar intention finding out what is nature's intention working on building a similar intention and through that equivalence this resonance just like a radio wave that that a radio receiver starts catching when it's aimed at the right frequency you start feeling sensing nature's purpose in everything that's happening and and here we have something truly wondrous that instead of being uh, a goat who just got a really good goat partner and a good goat house and some nice green grass <laughs> no but by doing this by coming into harmony with nature we become so much more our perception our feelings become so much more than this donkey life all of a sudden we start to feel this eternal sensation that's beyond just the simple problem that we seem to be facing or even like you know if you if you could have if 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 the cells of our body had cute little deer eyes and cute polka dots on it, then every time a cell in our body died, we would be like, oh, right? So it's like we would start to see that each and everything, and of course we can't do it yet, but each and everything that we're perceiving in our reality is just like that. It's a cell in the body, and when we have the new focus based on this new connection between all the disparate parts we begin to rise literally it's in a it's a perception that's above the perception on this level and all yes. of those problems that nature herself is presenting all become just a force instead of erasing them or saying they don't exist all of that becomes a lifting wave right the problems are not for us to eradicate them and fix them the problems are there to fix us to so to answer the question that 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 we had that we we gave a title 
uh, to this episode. Is nature trying to wipe humanity off the planet? So, on the one hand, yes, it's trying to to uh, it's going to wipe us in our current form. It's going to make us something new. We, just like the caterpillar that turns into a butterfly, we humans are going to evolve to a new state of living that is going to be in, the, in, in connection with the guiding force of nature that is non-material. We're going to rise above time, space, motion to identify, sympathize with the guiding force of nature, with that governing force behind the whole system of laws and then this uh, this whole reality where we see so much suffering, so much problems, so much to fix, will understand it had a purpose of taking us beyond it. Th that really is the only way to to justify all of the suffering in this reality. And it the only way to justify the the, the pain and suffering in this world is to rise above this world. Anyway, in order to do that, yeah. we nature is uh, pushing us to connect with each other, pushing us to become more connected with all of our different forms, with all of our different opinions, to become closer and closer together. So as we conclude the show, just want to say thank you to all of the amazing uh, friends from all over the world who came and joined us today, yes. Slightly Slanted Sleuth and Patricia and Kevin and Shannon and Yetzi uh, and Francine. Corey and, and Walter. David uh, Mancini. The Mancini, of course. Albert is here. Oh, my God. Hey, Patricia Albert. Patricia. And Kevin and Corey. Here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh Albert is here. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah. Uh, and Debbie, Deborah, Debbie and Julian. Deborah and Karen and Anton and 88NKW44. Uh, hello there, you two. And Strata, Kata, Julian, Strata, Kat, Julian, and Julie. John Wolf and Wendy and everyone. If we missed anyone. Ruby. Anton. Anna. Right. TJ333. Three, three. Yeah. Okay. Simone. Friends, Coleman, Robertson, and Douglas. Le Le wow, so Le many friends here. Mocha and movies. Sabir and Rebecca anyway. and TC Kennedy and Robert Friend. Hey, Robert. Uh, yeah, great to be with you guys. Really great to Everything be with you Everything is in our hands, friends. Everything is in our hands. We'll yeah. see you next Thursday at 2 p.m. Let's be connected more and more above all of the problems, above all the things that nature pre uh, is presenting to us. It is her. It is him. It is whatever you want to call it. Let's find in that space our new connection above that, and we'll start to perceive. We will, in our lives, start to perceive a new reality. Uh, we'll use all of the forces that nature's presenting in order to raise us up as long as we just keep adding the big plus on top of her big minus. Asaf, thank you, Chris. Thanks. And we'll see you Tuesday, Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Give us a song. Then yeah. You'll see a picture of all right. Me. Through you, I find my flaws. Through this key, a place where we can open doors. Together we get the fire it burns, a chance to feel alive. A song from the heart, singing that love will cover our crime. To see the face of love through your eyes. Together as one, 